Hi everybody, it's Margaret here with 60 and Me. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you're well. Um, we have sisters all over the world, 150 countries, and I'm so grateful for all of you and for the support that you give me. It's um, it's a, a kind of a funny time of the year. It's almost exactly two years since we were hit by something that we didn't expect. It came out of the blue, but it impacted the whole world. And uh, so for me, this is a time of reflection about it all. And looking back, um, in a way that is positive. Now, you know, you, you, you sort of look at things as, as there were endings, things ended on a micro level and on a macro level because of the pandemic. And, uh, but you try to turn that around and see the positive because really it's true. With every ending, there is a new beginning. And I wanna talk a bit about why it's important though to reflect on those endings and adapt to a new way of thinking, a new way of living. And, uh, you know, maybe just together we can share the journey a bit here. Um, Jennifer Thompson is one of our bloggers and she wrote this article on you know this very topic of endings and new beginnings so I mean I don't need to tell you of course what's happened in the last two years and how it's impacted you you know you know because it's been dramatic uh, there has you know there's been a sharp uh, rate of uh, increase in divorce rates people have moved home there's been a, a, an incredible movement of people moving from cities into the country People have resigned their jobs. This is this concept of the great resignation that's being talked about now, which is where people are saying, you know, I think I'll just continue working from home. I prefer this. I'm more productive. I'm, I'm enjoying it more. Um, I mean, there are obviously some that don't think that's the case, but you know, there, there's been this trend. I mean, I'm just looking, thinking of the things that have been written about and, and analyzed in the last couple of months. There's been um, a, a change in, 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 in the, the certainty that we feel about our world. We know that, oh, move my desk there. Um, and also the fact that we're taking more t uh, time and attention on our health. You know, that we actually are taking more care about staying healthy and well and going to the doctor, getting, you know, getting um, uh, checkups now that we can go back to a doctor. It's just so many different changes. And some people are moving home. Some people have actually decided that, you know, the place that they're living is not their heart place. It's not the place that they want to live, um, you know, for the, the, the rest of their lives. They want to go somewhere else. And so people are moving back to places. And also a lot of women are moving forward into new adventurous places abroad, Mexico, in Panama, Italy. Um, I just, I know so many, have had so many conversations with women in our 60 and Me community uh, from women who are doing that. And they're just kind of giving up everything that they thought they would always have solid in their lives. And they're moving forward. So it all depends, of course, on your perspective uh, as to how you manage and how you deal with change. And um, I think it's Carol Dwork um, wrote a book on this concept of the growth mindset versus the limited mindset. And I think if you see a big change in your lives uh, as being something limiting and it's, you're not going to be able to do this anymore, like travel anymore. You're not going to be able to travel as freely anymore. You're not going to be able to, you know, meet friends in a casual way. You'll never, you're never going to be the same when it comes to that. You can see that as a limiting reality, or you can see it as a growth and a growth perspective, a growth mindset. Okay, so we can't do this, but we can do this. And that, that new this might be even better and more interesting and more exciting uh, and, and bring out in us some creativity and inventiveness and you know, just spontaneity that we didn't have before. New ways of meeting people, new ways of, um, you know, doing work, new ways of living. I mean, a lot of people are going back to the land, getting a property, co-housing, co-living is really, really um, growing now. This is where people are getting together, buying a property together, and then, you know, just living, growing food, raising animals, you know, just living a more independent life. And the co-living movement, especially for the millennials and younger people, where people are renting a room in a house as opposed to, you know, buying an apartment or having a, a mindset that, you know, that they're limited now financially. They can't do these certain things. That's the, that's the limiting mindset. But then there's this whole new world of opportunity that's, um, you know, that's there for them. So have you had to start over? You know, I, I guess it's it's just a, a thing of when you have to make a, a new change, a new take a new direction in your lives. Is that something that is happening to you? Like you have to do it because it's happening to you, or are you empowering yourself to make it happen? And that's the difference between those two kind of mindsets. Circumstances are, you know, can we can? I mean, that's that phrase. You know, life can change on a dime. 
it is so true. I mean, I've uh, you know, because I connect with so many women here in our 60 ME community, and, and especially our Patreon supporters group, where we talk, you know, almost every other day about what's going on in people's lives. You know, you're one minute someone's got everything going for them and the next minute they've had a loss or they've had a diagnosis or they have had something happen. And there's, you know, there's only two responses to that really. You can say, okay, I'm going to move forward with what I've got. I'm going to be grateful and positive or I'm going to say, well, I'm giving up. That's it. You know what's left. You know, we've all had shadows in our past. We all have dark places that we don't want to think about, talk about, live through again. Um, you know, some of those experiences have left very, very deep wounds. But, and, and I know we've talked, for example, about um, estrangement. I, I just, my heart has been broken so many times for people. Um, as I read the, uh, we have articles about this topic and people just write back with their stories. And it's just so incredibly difficult, um, you know, that we actually see, uh, you know, something that we value so much crumbling in front of our eyes, family particularly. But I guess the, the point that uh, Jennifer makes in this article, which I think is a good one and it's a hard one, it's a hard one, is that often our memory of things, our memory of circumstances, our memory of things that we did or decisions that we made or or steps that we took or people that we married or, you know, you can list all the different things. They were just, you know, our perception of them now is different than the reality. And I think it's important. I actually it's often, like many of you, I'm divorced and I often go back through my um, p pictures and um, well, not often, maybe once every six months or so, I'll just get everything out and, and have a look at pictures and see the smiles. You know, the, the kids, my ex-husband, the, the, the places that we travel, the things that we did, the adventures that we, that we had. And I look at the smiles and I think, remember that, that was important. And yes, you know, you may be in a situation or a relationship now as you're in your 60s that you may have been dealing with for many years and not happy. But I think that, um, you know, it's not happening to you. It's happening because you've made those choices. And sometimes they're not so realistic about, you know, and sometimes you've got to trust that there were two sides to every story. You know, I know that's tough. I really do. But you're going to you've got to almost in a way rescript the past. You know, you've got to kind of retell the story in a way that um, ref reflects that growth mindset rather than the than the one that's harsh and, and you know, g creates guilt and creates sadness and, you know, a, and a sense of regret. But, you know, I guess see your past losses and your pa and the past experiences as opportunities that you've had to become the woman that you are today. I know this is hard and I, I, I guess I'm kind of preaching to the converted because I know <laughs> I know from so many conversations with people that you're you're doing your best. You, you truly are. But there are some habits you can change, things you can do uh, to not repeat those decisions and those situations and staying healthy, getting out into the world, doing something in your community, um, you know, doing your best to stay engaged with your with your friends and family. It takes effort. I mean, we've all moved halfway around the world. I mean, my dearest friend in the whole world is in Las Vegas and I'm in Switzerland and we do our best to stay in touch, you know, and, and I've got a wonderful friend in India. I've got lots of friends in England who I don't see nearly enough, not to mention my family in, in other parts of the world that I don't see as much physically as I, as I would love. But, you know, I think you've got to just make the best of the situation and see that the endings that may seem so difficult and so cha so challenging and so black and white are actually doorways to new beginnings. So the gift of starting over, I guess, is the one that Jennifer talks about. I'll, I'd have, it, have a look at her article and read it because she talks about her own experience and, you know, how every, well, it's for all of us, how every loss, every mistake is an opportunity for new growth and new directions. And sometimes it's hard, but you've got, you know, here with 60 and Me, we're here to help. And we've got lots of articles on this topic to make you feel, you know, there's some practices, things you can do to, um, you know, to create that growth mindset. I mean, one, one thing you can do, for example, is when someone's talking to you about something and they say, I've got this really great idea. I'm going to do this and this and this. Just hold your response. And instead of saying, but what about this? Just say, and that sounds great. And what about this? And what about that? You can do this with your positive self-talk, with your with the ways that you um, address situations that, you know, I'm sorry, but you didn't get that job. 
or you didn't get that um, position that you were looking for. Okay, that's great. Um, I now have an opportunity to spend more time to do this. And you just, I know you have to keep reminding yourself and keep bouncing back and it can be hard. And I'm looking back two years, we've done it. We've got through two years. We've played the game in the sense that we've done everything we were told to do to stay healthy for most of us. Well, anyone that's watching this, of course, is here. And that's, you know, that's a big, uh, big deal. We got through the most difficult time in probably our whole entire life when it, when it comes to something we had felt like we had no control over. In many ways, we didn't. But what new beginnings have marked your life this last two years? I'd love to know. Share with us what you've, what, what's changed in your life, what's ended, what's begun, how you're feeling about those changes. And if you need a little bit of support, need a virtual hug, just mention it in the uh, comment section below because we've got more women than you would imagine who would reach out and help you. We're here for each other, truly. Okay, everybody, we'll have a really lovely day wherever you are. I know that I love you so much and I really do care for you and respect you all on your journey. Uh, we're here to support one another. Take really good care, stay healthy and strong. If there's endings uh, uh, approaching in your life now, just move forward with a new beginning promise you it can be done. Take really good care. Bye-bye.